it's pretty clear that the things we experience when we're very, very young, young children or preteen years, influence us for the rest of our lives, particularly with musicians. So many musicians started very, very early. Keith Jarrett taking piano lessons when he was three years old. That's a good example. Of, of course you get it in your fingers and in your mind and, and you grow up playing. You don't, you don't remember anything else. But what happens when a great musician didn't play when they were very young? That's what we're going to look at here. I'm Ron Rodos and welcome to my journey through the real book, number one, what is it, 16, 116. And uh, this is Fee Fi Fo Fum by Wayne Shorter, um, maybe my, my favorite jazz musician. I guess Keith Jarrett, uh, Gil Evans, uh, Duke Ellington, and um, Wayne Shorter are probably my, my top four. Um, in some ways, Miles Davis, right up there too. So, well, Wayne Shorter did not grow up playing music. He loved movie soundtracks, particularly ones that sounded like uh, 20th century classical music, like um, uh, monster movies, Wolfman, Frankenstein, things like that. He speaks about that a lot. Um, and then that led him to study Stravinsky's music later on. But um, he, he, he didn't play until he was about 14 or 15 or so, growing up in Newark, New Jersey. I actually knew someone who went to high school with him, Bobby Thomas, the drummer who played with my teacher, Billy Taylor. And I got to meet Wayne through an introduction with, uh, through Bobby one time, memorable, probably 10 minutes we spent together just talking uh, at the Blue Note in New York. But um, Wayne Shorter did not grow up playing music. I don't think he touched an instrument really seriously until he was 14 with the clarinet. And so what did he do? Well, he talks about this, um, this yard next to his house where he and his brother would, would, would tell stories and you know, the, the, uh, the swing or something became the spaceship, or I guess there was a wagon or something, it became a spaceship and going to outer space and having these adventures in his imagination that tied into his love of movies, which he still speaks about in interviews a lot, movies, stories, and a lot of his um, music is influenced by that. And it, it's, um, I think it's relevant because more than maybe any other jazz musician except, uh, I guess, Duke Ellington or, or possibly Charles Mingus, Wayne Shorter's music is, is inspired by what you call extra musical things, non-musical things, stories, um, uh, superheroes, whatever it is. Fee Fi Fo Fum comes from fairy tale, right? Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack goes up the beanstalk with these magic, grows by these magic beans. He comes across the giant's castle. The giant wants to eat him and says, "Fee fi fo fum, I smell the, uh, was I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread." Right? Pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty. Uh, how scary or fun, however you look at it. And Jack hides, and then he steals the the goose that laid the golden egg. I hope I'm not getting my fairy tales mixed up. And he goes down the beanstalk and, and uh, lives happily ever after with his poor suffering mother who, who didn't want him to trade the money for the beans anyway. So how does this relate to that? I don't know. This isn't typical giant catching jack music. It's not text painting in that way. But it's interesting that the chords are very sort of magical if you just take them by themselves. No, that's evocative. That's like possibility. on an adventure, and you're not sure where this is going, you know? And then the, the, the bridge part, the middle eight, has a real definite kind of bluesy groove. And I don't know, maybe that's Wayne's view of Jack, you know, this cool guy stealing the thing from the, the giant, I don't know. But uh, maybe it's not that literal, but maybe it is. You know, composers from Beethoven on, very um, influenced by uh, telling a story. Beethoven and uh, his pastoral symphony is a good example. Um, so, let's see, I have a pencil over here. I want you to grab a pencil, not a pen, but a pencil that you could always erase if you need to. Don't write music on pen, uh, pens. And we're going old school, not on the computer. Take your pencil, there's a typo in here. The third line down, the bridge, the third measure. but it's A flat. It's the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th measure in the piece on the last 8th note. Right in an A flat. And um, so it goes. It's part of the B flat chord. 
And then the next time down, uh, four measures later, it is the natural because it's going on an A chord. So that's a surprise there going back. So uh, we fixed the typo in the real book. I think it's the second one we've caught so far in 116 tunes uh, in terms of uh, typos from what they meant. I know some of the chords, uh, not always what were on the original, but um, hey, it's a great resource nonetheless. So I'm going to start out of tempo and maybe implying the melody, maybe not, but trying to, try to capture some of that um, evocative feeling of uh, anything's possible from these chords. That's what I'm getting from this. Beautiful. E flat 7 with that sharp 11 in the melody, right from the get-go.
it's so interesting how you know Wayne starts with the uh, E flat seven sharp eleven. You put thirteenths in there, ninths. It's kind of like an F major triad over an E flat seven chord, and it's this opening up, this evocative, this beautiful sense of richness and possibility here, adventure, and it ends the same way. It's like a surprise chord. Life is ahead of us right there. You know, beautiful, beautiful tune. Um, I think it's it's because it's on uh, Speak No Evil, it was a great album in the 60s. I think it's a big standard. You know, um, everybody who likes Wayne Shorter, you know, plays this. If you're just learning it for the first time, welcome to the club. And um, enjoy. The changes don't always go where you think they're going to go, but uh, get to know it now. And even if it doesn't feel totally comfortable, over time it will. These tunes seem much more natural to me than when I was first learning them. So at first it's like, whoa. But at the same time, it's like fun. It's like, oh, it goes here. And then, oh, this chord. And then it's going there. And now up a half step. Now thirds. Um, you know, leading us on an adventure. So uh, enjoy every step of the way. And good luck with your playing. I'll see you next time.